Ist. I think um, m many of you guys have heard the news here in the UK that um, a football player called Kurt Zuma was v uh, a video of him leaked actually it wasn't sort of secretly a video of him leaked where he's basically um, assaulting his cat and kicking it all over the kitchen and stuff and just being a bit of a lout and um, everyone's obviously you know losing their shit over it especially here in the UK and it's funny because I'm just going to get up on the screen here it's interesting not funny it's interesting because it does seem like people are treating Kurt Zuma kicking his cat with way more severity than they are treating the instances of racial abuse that players suffer on the pitch in the UK on a regular basis. We just saw it on the weekend in the FA Cup. We saw a fan run into the run onto the pitch and punch a football player on the pitch. And who did he punch? Vis-a-vis -a, -vis a black player. So we've seen all these instances that happen. And we also have instances where players are threatened to walk off the pitch if they get racial abuse in the stands. And fans have basically said, no, we don't want to see that. We don't want our game to be ruined. They don't want to be inconvenienced. They think it doesn't, it sends the wrong message. You're letting the races win, play and stay on the pitch. So basically they're saying stay on the pitch so that you don't have to, um, the game doesn't have to be cancelled. They have to lose their, their weekend on the Saturdays. But when it comes to a cat, oh, oh, sorry. I'm not going to play it because it's horrible. But I'm just going to show you the screen grabs. But when it comes to a player kicking a cat, which obviously is heinous because he has, literally has it in his hand, drops it and then kicks it across the flipping kitchen, right? Which is absolutely wild to see. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely nuts to see. But people are treating this with much more severity and way more seriousness than they would treat anything concerning racism in football. There's another video too, another part of the video where he kind of chases the cat around his kitchen and throws stuff at it, basically scaring it to death and whatnot. So clearly not the not the nicest guy to pet so you would seem, right? So that makes complete sense. But the funniest part about it, I thought, was the David Moyes interview. David Moyes is the manager of West Ham, who's obviously the, the manager of Kurt Zuma. And who also decided to pick Kurt Zuma in the game against Watford. So after the video came out, instead of dropping Kurt Zuma or basically, you know, whatever it may be, making up an excuse that he's injured, he started he decided to start him from the beginning because in his eyes, he's one of their best players. And I think what it highlights is the lack of morality and ethics in football. And the reason why I mention this is because I feel like a lot of fans have this naive view that somehow if a crime is heinous enough, then the club will do the moral thing and sack the player. Da, da, da. It's never going to happen. Clubs are in it to win games. They're in it to kind of get fans in the stadium, get, get you know, have people pay for the tickets through the gates, buy merchandise, support the club, maybe get bonuses if they finish in certain league positions, blah, 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 blah. But they're in it for the glory. And whoever can help them in their pursuit of glory, they will sign them. We've heard already what happened with this player in Scotland called David Goodwillie or whatever his name is. He supposedly was convicted of rape and then kind of acquitted. And then he got charged, I think, in like a civil case. So basically, it's under no, we're under no kind of, um, we're under no kind of under doubt that he definitely did do the rape. But obviously, they couldn't prove it under reasonable doubt in the court. But he obviously was guilty of some sort of form of sexual assault. Maybe not the rape, but some form of sexual assault. Still, the club in um, Scotland decided to sign him against the advice of everybody, against the recommendation of everybody. They have a very popular women's team. They, they obviously were kicking up a fuss about it. Like, sponsors were falling over the place or falling left, right, and centre and walking away from the club. And they still didn't want to let him go until the very last moment when it started to affect their bottom line and, you know, fans were basically protesting and not turning up to the games. They suddenly did, they suddenly did the right thing and decided to basically suspend him with pay, which is crazy. Because it means they still get paid his salary, but he just won't play for the football club. And then it brings me onto the topic of the Mason Greenwood stuff, which I'm not going to talk about because, you know, it's many, it's messy to get involved in. It's not my business. But the Mason Greenwood thing, I think fans should also temper their expectations because it's a domestic dispute. If the young lady decides not to press charges, he could go away scot free. And most likely, considering the nature of their relationship, considering what we've heard on social media, it might be a thing where they're unable to prove whatever they're trying to prove in court. If that's the case, or if there's any sliver of possibility of him walking, there will be a queue of clubs ready to take him. A queue. Even with the news that Nike dropped Mason Greenwood, there will be a queue of sports brands, of clothes or sponsors willing to sign up and get him on board because of the eyes and attention that he'll bring to their brand. And obviously, if you're a football club, because he's still a talented football player, despite what you might think of him as a human, on the football pitch, he's one of the most talented football players, especially young players that we have in Europe, let alone the country. So if he gets acquitted in any kind of way, if he doesn't spend any time in jail, he gets a suspended sentence, whatever, he's playing football. And I think this video clip of David Moyes rationalising or basically having no idea what um, 
uh, perception looks means in this context lets you know everything you know about football in terms of like they don't really give a shit so this is David Moyes being asked about Kurt Zuma and why he decided to play a player who had been videoed you know kicking a cat across his kitchen and uh, the club have taken all the actions that they, they can do at the moment and they're they're you know, working on that behind the scenes my job is to try and pick a team and pick the best team which gives me the best chance at West Ham and uh, Kurt was part of that team do you, do you feel that at any point a moral decision comes into making that team as well, mate? Uh, for for me, yeah, because I'm a, a big animal lover, <laughs> and I. Uh, what does that mean? I'm a big animal lover. That's like saying I'm a big lover of black people. I have black friends. I actually like chicken. I'm a big fan of mango juice. I like hip hop. I like the hippity pop pop pop. Like, what does that mean? I'm a big animal lover. What does that even mean? Just empty platitudes for the sake of it. You know, and I, I think it's something which will have affected a lot of people. So I'm really disappointed with it. But as I said before, my job tonight was to try and win for West Ham and put the best team out I could to give me that chance. And just finally, you able to shed any light on the action the club will take? Uh, no, I think the club would rather probably deal with that, and I'm sure in time they'll let you know what that action is. No, they won't. Cheers, David. Cheers. Thanks, uh, James Cole. David, do you worry it sends the wrong message, the fact that he plays tonight? I don't quite understand your question. Sorry, <laughs> I don't quite. How easy is that, is, that, is that question to answer? Do you think it sends the wrong message that a player that got videoed kicking his cat and chasing it around his kitchen is playing tonight, considering, you know, he's under investigation? In normal walks of life, you know, you'd probably be suspended upon further investigation. If you found not guilty, you come back to work, no problem. But for whatever reason, because there's football, morality and ethics out of the window. I quite understand uh, if you could explain it to me a little bit better. Well, in any other work, walk of life, you'd be suspended pending an investigation. But he played and people find that very strange, given what's out there, what's public, what's not. Mm -hmm. uh, well... As I said earlier, and I'm only going to repeat myself, James, that I... Mm, well, I don't give a shit. But yeah, so that's the case. And then in the end, it looks like it's done anyway. RSPCA takes away West Ham's uh, defenders' cats after the video. Kurt Zuma started for West Ham against Watford on Wednesday. And less than 24 hours after the video version of him kicking and punching his pet cat, David Moyes said this did not impact his decision to start a defender. So now he's being... Um, the cats are being taken away from him. Um, it's a weird one again for me because I've never really been a pet person in general i was a, i was the kind of person who would take the piss out of people who cried when their pets died but over time as i've matured and got older and you know hang been in the company of people with their pets and see how they interact with, with each other and see the love and the warmth and the companionship that they give to people it does make sense why you would cry when your cat dies or when your dog dies it does make complete sense it's not something dumb even when people get pet lizards and stuff do you know what i mean being able to have um a living organism you know in your company especially if you're living alone and stuff or even with people it doesn't matter just in general it's quite a nice thing and you know it's, it's it'll make complete sense if someone that you felt if that animal or pet that you had that you built a connection with suddenly passed away it would make more sense why you get hurt it's like when you're a kid and you lose your favorite teddy bear do you know what I mean you obviously start bawling your tears out too you can just buy another one but there's something special about the one you got there same with a pet you can just get another pet but you know there's nothing like that first bond or that connection that you have with that particular animal that you obviously keep as a pet and whatnot but i just find it hilarious that how people are treating this way more seriously than they treated any racism issue it seems like in the space of two days every sponsor's basically ran away from from him he got dropped by adidas i think v v vitality which is the company that organizes half marathons i think or something like that they dropped they they're not sponsoring west ham anymore which is you know probably no water of the ducks back but the adidas one's a big deal for him so he's not sponsored by adidas anymore it's like it's a bit crazy you know what i mean but again the football club in the end are proving us that sometimes footballers get away with murder because they let them get away with murder so it's kind of like a cyclical thing they let them get away with murder because they're good players. The players take liberties. The clubs complain. Um, the fans don't get the you know the best possible product on the pitch because the players aren't really giving them shit. You know, everyone suffers. It goes round and round.